During this presentation, I'm going to show how to complete the butcher test on this piece of uh, top sirloin butt. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is to measure the weight of the product uh, prior to any processing. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and weight on the scale behind. So according to the scale, this weighs 15 and a quarter pounds. So I'll just go ahead and record that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and open it. We'll take some care uh, to open up the packaging. You can see there's quite a bit of juice in here. Uh, so I'm going to kind of open it halfway. And then I'm going to take uh, the top sirloin butt. I'm going to try to lift it on out of the package here. Okay, we'll just discard this. Okay, now the top sirloin butt has uh, several muscles. Uh, you can kind of see this is a major seam right here. We're going to go ahead and separate uh, this top, total top sirloin butt, which is uh, number 184 in the Meat Buyer's Guide. And we're going to take off uh, this, this top section, this cap from the rest of it. Okay, and you can kind of see there's a natural seam. So a lot of times the best thing you can do is just to kind of start separating it with your fingers. And as you're going along, just kind of run your knife when it gets stuck. Okay. So um, this is the, the top, the cap, the top sirloin cap, uh, or the butt cap. And uh, actually in Brazilian cuisine, this is a really prized cut because it's actually the picanha, uh, which is traditionally served in uh, churrascarias. And it also uh, makes great steaks. Uh, it has pretty good marbling in it, and it's a very flavorful steak. So if we were to uh, serve it as picanha, we would want to cut it against the grain and kind of fold it against itself. Uh, for, since we're going to use it for steaks, we're just going to go ahead and cut it up here in a little bit. Okay, um, this is uh, 184B inside of the meat buyer's guide. And um, this piece of meat actually has kind of a, a muscle that runs down it that we're gonna go ahead and separate uh, this piece into. Before we do that though, we're going to remove all of the fat so we can kind of get a good glimpse at uh, those two kind of sections of this. So it's kind of useful to use a boning knife when you do this because you can just kind of run it right underneath the edge of the fat and remove that. So you can see the seam is starting to become more visible. I, I don't know that seam's the right word. It's just kind of uh, a little piece of, of um, fascia that's running there. Let me go ahead and remove off all this fat. Okay, we we'll wanna make sure we're getting off all these little flecks of silver skin. Kinda of see a couple here. Silver skin's tough stuff. If it gets stuck in your teeth when you're eating a steak, if it goes between them, it can damage your gum. This kind of thinner fascia, you can just leave that if there's just a little bit of it. next part gets a little tricky on the butt because um, it kind of dives down in this this connective tissue does so 
So we might end up separating this piece of meat off. We'll see how it looks when we cut steaks. But we want to trim as much of this silver skin out as we can without making the meat uh, too PC or come apart in any way. That's kind of one of the tricks of meat cutting is knowing when to stop. Okay, so um, this piece, when cut into two pieces in the meat cutter's guide, is referred to as 184F, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to kind of take all these trimmings. I'm going to move them into the pan behind me. So that's all fat and fascia and silver skin. Those are items that we're not going to eat. So now, um, if you look, we have kind of this line here that runs along it, and it kind of parallels with a tendon on this side, but it doesn't run neatly through it. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and cut it kind of straight down this line. That'll result in kind of this bigger roast and this smaller roast. The smaller one is tr traditionally cut up into steaks that are oftentimes referred to as baseball cut steaks, or um, they're a filet style uh, sirloin steak. Okay, so we're just gonna go straight down from here. And you can see that we have this piece of uh, silver skin that kind of runs down through it. And that's why you can't just go digging, otherwise you'll end up uh, wasting quite a bit of meat. So we stopped from trying to get it from the top. We've kind of gone straight through. Here, we're going to re remove a bit of it, uh, but we'll go ahead and leave the portion that's running through this side. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and remove this piece. And we're going to leave this, this side. So this part of it, sometimes uh, we want to kind of trim that up and make it nice and neat for the edge of a steak. Okay. So uh, now we're ready to go ahead and portion this half. Uh, we still have this section here, but we're going to go ahead and portion this into steaks. This would be a traditional sirloin, uh, sometimes referred to as strip style steak. So um, I'm going to aim for like uh, a 12 ounce steak on this. So my first one was a little bit light, so I'm going to use that for something else. This one was a little heavy, so I'm going to just remove part of that silver skin. One thing that's good to do when you get to the end uh, is to see how large the final piece is. So this is 16 ounces and I'm trying to get 12 ounce steaks. So I just want to take four ounces off of this side. Looks good. Okay. Next I have my baseball steaks and uh, Oftentimes these are served in, in as a smaller portion uh, than our other steaks. Oftentimes they might even be like wrapped in in bacon and served as a filet mignon would be served. So let's go ahead and suppose that these are being served as an eight ounce uh, cut. So we don't quite have a straight edge here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a straight edge. And I'm going to cut an eight ounce steak. Looks good. Right on. Good. Okay. 
That is a seven ounce steak right there. Well, let's check it again. Yeah, it's seven and a half. So it's kind of tricky. Is it flat enough to sit as a baseball cut steak? Doesn't really look like it. It's kind of sitting a little funny. That's borderline. So we're going to go ahead and set that aside. Okay, now we're ready to cut our last of the three uh, sections. Go ahead and trim this. So oftentimes if you're not comfortable using a big old knife like this, you could certainly use a boning knife, particularly if you need to make a bit more precise cuts. I'm gonna do that for this section. making a, two piles, silver skin and fat, along with trim meat. Let's put this in the trim meat stack. Keep these organized. Okay. Got a little piece of silver skin there, we'll want to trim off. Okay, you'll notice that the silver skin does kind of duck underneath the muscle here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that point. Okay, and then we have this fat cap. So uh, if we were serving this as um, uh, picanha, we would go ahead and leave this on since we're cutting it into steaks. Sirloin steaks, we're gonna go ahead and take it off. Okay, we've about got all the meat trimmed. So when you're cutting steaks, uh, one thing you need to be careful of is that you're cutting them against the grain. If not, then the, the steak will be really tough. There are a couple of exceptions to that, like flank and skirt steak that are later served cut against the grain after they're cooked. Uh, but most steaks, we need to make sure they're cut against the grain. So if you notice, the grain's actually running this direction on the steak or on this roast, so we need to make sure we're cutting it this direction. Okay, so uh, in cutting this, I have to uh, pay attention to what my specs are for this particular piece of meat. These we did in eight ounces, these we did in 10 ounce steaks. Um, and since it's not a baseball cut, we would either need to do them into 12 ounce steaks, or um, if it's sold separately as a different item on the menu, uh, we could do them whatever we want. Uh, since it's quite possible that these are sold as the same item on the menu, um, even though they, they are from a different cut, it's all top sirloin butt. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut it against the grain. Uh, in order to get a steak that's not too thick, I'm going to have to discard a bit of this in order to do that. Okay, so I'm going to start this cut right here. Okay, now I'm going to cut a 12 ounce steak. Great. Okay, and we might only get one more out of this. We'll see, we might be able to get a second. Okay, so this is 12 ounces. So we'll try to cut off four ounces off this side. Okay, that's sitting a little funny. If we were to tenderize it, it would lay a little flatter. That should be 12 ounces, yep. Okay, so we're left with some baseball cut steaks. We ended up with four, we almost had five, right? That was really close, that was just shy of seven and a half. Uh, or actually, let's check it. Yeah, it was seven and a half, it's just sitting kind of funny. So just depending on the specs, that might be perfectly fine. Uh, but we went ahead and put it as uh, brochette Okay, so we have four of those. And then we have um, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine of the uh, sirloin steaks, the normal sirloin steaks. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and record our weights. Um, let's go ahead and move this fat with the other fat. We'll go ahead and weigh it first. That weighs three and three quarters pounds. That's our fat and trim. Uh, the, the trim that's going to be discarded, so three and three quarters. Okay. Next we have our brochette. Weighs two and three quarters. And now we are going to go ahead and weigh uh, the normal sirloin steaks. Okay, that weighs exactly seven pounds. And now for the baseball cuts. That weighs one and three quarters. So top sirloin, seven pounds, and then baseball cut was one and three quarters. Okay, we can now um, go through and add up all of our values and uh, uh, double check the weight of this compared to our total weight. So um, we can add up all the fractionals first. So we have uh, two and a quarter, okay? And then that gets added to the amounts here, which we have six plus seven um, is equal to 13, plus the two equals 15 and a quarter. So we have precisely 15 and a quarter. Okay, looks like our scale might be a teeny bit off. Um, actually, one of these uh, the brochette weighed a teeny bit less than two and three quarters. I, I measured it two and three quarters, uh, but in reality it was about uh, two and five eighths. And uh, that would account for the purge that we uh, discarded at the beginning, the packaging and some of that uh, juice that was in there. Okay, uh, now that we have measured all of our amounts, we're ready to go ahead and uh, record these values and complete our analysis. So now we're ready to do the analysis portion of the butcher test. And uh, to complete this, we've got our information recorded from our piece of paper here. And we have a template that we are going to use to complete the analysis. There are also some useful equations down here that we're going to use in performing this analysis. So the first thing that we need to do is to just record all the values from our butcher test experiment. So fat, we'll go ahead and put um, three pounds, 3.75 pounds. So we could put um, either the pounds in here or we could put uh, pounds and ounces. We'll just go ahead and put the pounds in as uh, they're written here. So two and three quarters. If you recall though, we uh, over recorded this a bit. So um, let's go ahead and put in two and five eighths. So equals two plus Five divided by eight. Okay, baseball cut came up with one and three quarters, so 1.75, and then sirloin we had seven. All right, let's check our math. So we'll take the sum, and we'll just do these fields up above. And we'll want to take out the 12 here. So you can see uh, we actually put in the brochette wrong. So this should have been uh, 2 plus 5 divided by 8. There we go. 
Now, if you look, our total was uh, 15 and a quarter that we started with. So let's go ahead and put in our loss and cutting, which is 1 eighth of a pound, so equals 1 divided by 8. And we could have also put 2 ounces here. Now we're ready to calculate our ratio to total weight. To do this, we're going to uh, use this formula right here, which is weight of a part uh, divided by weight of the whole. So we're doing the part, fat, divided by the whole. So equals our pounds. If we had ounces, we would need to add them in. So let's just go ahead and use an equation that will work with the ounces as well. So plus ounces divided by 16. So that's converting the ounces into pounds. Okay, and then this is all getting divided by our total. So pounds, we'll want to put that in parentheses as well. Uh, plus ounces. Okay, then we'll just put in some dollar signs in front of our uh, bottom row reference here to keep it on this row as we copy it down the sheet. And now we're ready to go ahead and copy this down. Okay, next we are going to populate our values per pound. And uh, there aren't any values per pound up above, so we're just going to record them. Okay, let's do brochette and our baseball cut. And let's say that we value the brochette at uh, $3.50 per pound and the baseball cut at $6 per pound. So now we'll just go ahead and put those values in here. So brochette, $3.50, and baseball cut, $6. So uh, how did I come up with these values per pound? Well, this would uh, largely depend on the value that these are to the organization. So one way to kind of think about these would be if we were to go to our supplier and buy these items direct from the supplier, how much would we end up paying? and uh, those could be the values that we put in here. Another way to think about it is um, how much would we be willing to pay for them uh, if we didn't have them as a byproduct and we had to buy them by themselves. So that, that is actually a better way to think about it uh, because it could be that we have to pay a bunch for brochette from our supplier, but we would never do that. Maybe we have so much brochette left over that we're actually discarding it or giving it away to employees at a really reduced price. Um, if that's the case, we might want to even value our brochette less than $3.50 per pound, maybe even like $2.50 per pound. Uh, and that's a, a really low amount and an amount you would never pay, uh, but perhaps uh, this organization is cutting a lot of steaks and they just have a lot of meat left over that they can't use. So uh, I went ahead and just populated some values in here. These would be different for each organization. Now we're ready to calculate our... Uh, total value here, and that's just accomplished by taking the weight, so pounds, we'll go ahead and add in the ounces as well, even though there are no ounces here, so we would convert these ounces into pounds, okay, and this is getting multiplied by the value per pound, and I can just go ahead and copy this down. Now we're ready to calculate the value of the primary part, which is what we are after here, our sirloin steaks. This is what we're primarily after, seven pounds. So we just take um, the total cost, which is right here, the 57.95, and we subtract from that uh, the value of all the other parts. So I'm just going to add up all these values together. Okay, now we're ready to calculate our cost per usable pound, and to do that we are just going to take uh, the total value of the usable meat, so this item that we're after, and we're just going to divide it by uh, the weight of that item, and once again we'll set it up in case we had uh, ounces there, so it would calculate correctly if we were to display this differently. So this will be 7 pounds plus um, this is the amount of ounces divided by 16. So our 
estimated cost per usable uh, pound of the sirloin steaks is 547. Let's now convert that into ounces, and we can do that just by taking our cost per usable pound and dividing it by 16. Okay, we haven't defined the portion cost or the portion size, but if you recall back from when we were cutting it, uh, it was 12 ounces, so let's just go ahead and put in 12 ounces here. And our portion cost, we'll go ahead and scroll down, is our portion size times our cost per usable ounce. So portion size times cost per usable ounce. And then the last two things we're going to calculate are the cost factors. So we can do our cost factor per pound here. And that is equal to our price per pound, our cost for each usable pound, uh, divided by our dealer price per pound. And then for the cost factor per portion, we're just taking our portion cost and dividing that by our dealer price per pound. So that is the butcher test. Um, let's do a couple of calculations just to show how you could use this information. So let's say that the dealer price went up to $4.10 and we want to see uh, what the new um, standard cost for this portion would be, or this portion cost here. So our new dealer price is uh, $4.10. And we are now going to calculate our new uh, cost per portion or portion cost here. And we just take that, we just calculate that by taking our dealer price and timesing it by the portion cost factor. So if the dealer price was to go up to $4.10, we would expect the portion cost to go up to $4.42. Another way we could use the cost factors are to change the portion size and perhaps even change the cost and see uh, the effect that it has on the total portion cost. So we can do that by uh, entering in our dealer price. So our new dealer price, let's say that it is $3.60. And uh, we're thinking of dropping down the portion size to uh, 10 ounces. And we want to see the effect that, that all that has on uh, the standard portion cost. Let's put in a label here. So to do that, we would first need to calculate the new uh, cost per usable pound. And we would do that by just taking our new dealer price and multiplying it by our uh, cost factor per pound. Okay. Now uh, we need to be able to times this by the portion size. In order to do that, we need to get this cost into ounces, like it's displayed here. So we'll just divide that by 16. Okay, and now that is multiplied by our new portion size, 10 ounces. And we can copy the formatting here. And you can see the new portion cost at a 10 ounce portion and a, a lower dealer price is now $3.24. That's it for this butcher test example. Uh, have a wonderful day.